Have you seen oil lately? Crude oil is sitting at more than $75 a barrel, with Brent over $84 a barrel right now. This is we approach sanctions on Iran. Oil set to take effect next month. Uh, some analysts even predict $100 oil once again before the end of the year, partly as a result of these sanctions against Iran. Joining us now is the Shork Report publisher, Stephen Shork. Stephen, good to see you this morning. What's your take on the prices uh, of oil where it is right now? Uh, we're in the heck of, uh, in the middle, uh, Maria, of one heck of a hype market, a uh, market that is really being uh, pushed higher on fear and greed and not necessarily fundamentals. We have to keep in mind that the contract for November delivery on the NYMEX, which is the spot contract right now, uh, since the middle of August, that contract has rallied 19 percent. Uh, this is a contract that you deliver oil against in the month of November when oil demand is at its weakest. And it's also a month this time around where we're going to release release 11 million barrels of crude oil out of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Now, Maria, let's go back to the summer. This past summer, the market was able to withstand the loss of a significant amount of Canadian crude oil because exports will were disrupted due to a processing outage at a plant up in Calgary, and we had record demand for crude oil this past summer. Yet by August, global crude oil supplies were at an all-time high, and OPEC oil supplies were at a nine-month high, as a significant loss of Iranian and Venezuelan oil was offset by production out of Saudi, out of Iraq, out of Libya, and out of Nigeria. So over the summer, we opened the summer with oil prices right around where they are right now, $75 a barrel, and by the middle of August, they were 14 percent lower. Since the middle of August, the market has clearly rallied 19 percent, as I said, inside a month where demand is at its weakest and we're going to get artificial supply from the SPR. So clearly, this is a market, Maria, that's being driven by fear and greed, not by underlying fundamentals. So are the, it's a bubble. So you're saying the prices basically aren't sustainable. What does that mean for the big E&P companies like Exxon and Chevron? You know, you would think higher prices would, would be a good thing for them and their profitability, but we didn't see that in the last quarter because of hedging and because of the costs yes. that increased to take, take the oil out. Uh, you know, there's not as the pipeline issue and the Permian is a concern, and they're having to use... Um, trucks and other means yeah. to, that are more expensive. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, this is residue of the lack of investment uh, during the Great Recession, since the Great Recession, uh, given that uh, you did not want to make long-term investments in the oil and gas industry, given that the political environment at the time was clearly against that industry. You have to keep in mind that capital is going to go where it is welcomed and stay where it is well treated. And the previous administration did not uh, view capital investment in this area uh, with a very, very positive light. So this Therefore, we are now paying the dividends or receiving the lack of dividends on that investment. So we're just now at a part where we're starting to address the issue. But clearly, uh, this is going to weigh on the industry uh, for at least the next two years. All right, Stephen, we'll leave it there. I, I know you said Thanks, that Mary. it's being the market's being sort of pumped up because of fear and, and greed. But yeah. it is what it is. The sanctions are going into effect yeah, and people worry oh, that absolutely. there's going to be a shortage of oil. So it, it could be greed, but this is the reality of it, right? I mean, there could be well, less that, that oil on the global market. Well, well, that, that's just it. But let, let's keep in mind that uh, this or, this news, uh, w these sanctions just didn't come out of the blue. We've known about these sanctions okay. for the past four months, and I'm taking confidence in the fact that we came out of the weak, strongest demand ever seen this past summer, the, the peak demand season, mm. and we withstood that demand. We're now going into the weakest part. I think the market is more than capable of handling ah, this. Ah, good point. But that's All not right, to demand. say. But, yeah, but it's not to say uh, that when you get into a market like this, it's getting to the point where high prices now are becoming the justification for even high prices. This mm. smells like 2008 all over again, oh, and God. I don't want any part of it. And 2008 was when oil went all the way down to what? Well, it went from right where we are now, $75. Yeah. In a few months, it went to $150. Yeah. And in a few months after that, it went to $30. There so this yeah. is I a mean, very scary I remember scary that. That's when right Goldman now. Sachs came oh, out with yeah. a report that yeah. said it's going to 250 And then it went to 30 yeah, was awesome. I remember that. Yeah, that was That funny. was awesome. Yeah, and they only missed about a couple of decimal points. And gasoline $4.11 a gallon. That's the all-time high. Yeah. And then it went all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Stephen, good stuff. Thank you so much, sir. We will see Thanks you soon.